Hey guys, Dro here. I know I mentioned in the past that I thought bugs were cool and I got a really cool one that I wanted to show you guys today that is one of my weirdest pets. Um, I know a lot of people think these guys are gross, but here goes. Don't judge. <sighs> All right, yes. There's a cockroach in my hand. He's cool though, I promise. All right, so these guys are probably one of the biggest cockroaches that you'll see. Um, they're one of the biggest species. They get up to like four inches long and it's usually the males that get the biggest. But cool thing with these guys is they do a lot of really cool alien things. And they're not super fast and crazy like the ones that you see in houses even though I do have those as pets too I know I'm fucking weird it's all good anyway I wanted to tell you why I thought these guys were so cool and why I was fascinated by them so as you know when I was younger I worked at a few different uh, exotic pet shops and even owned my own at the time there was a guy that I worked with that was super into bugs and he had a roach that he called Papa Roach and it kind of looked like this one only it was a little bit bigger. It was a big male. I used to actually be afraid of holding roaches and crickets and other bugs because you get that icky feeling when they walk on you. You just kind of want to shake it off. He ended up showing me that they weren't so bad and I ended up learning more about them and I figured they're actually really freaking cool when you find out things that they can do and how they live. And even though they look scary, they really don't do anything. And as you can see, this guy's just sitting here. He's not going anywhere. Um, they can fly short distances, but not very far, and they usually don't. And when they're big and heavier like this, they would prefer to just kind of hang out. He's cleaning his antenna now. <laughs> I've noticed that, you know, some people get kind of creeped out by the antenna because they're just pointing at you all the time. That's just really how they kind of see and smell things. So you can't be angry at them for that. That's just how they were made. Another thing about these guys is they're arboreal. So they like to climb. As you can see, they have these flat bodies, which are really cool for hiding from predators. And if you think about it, in the reptile world, you get these so that you can feed your big bearded dragons or monitor lizards. I thought these guys were way cooler than just food. I saw this kit that they sell online that's called a Robo Roach, and you can actually implant two different electrodes to their antenna. And what happens is they feel these little tiny jolts that doesn't hurt them at all. It just feels like they're running into a wall or some kind of block. You can control them with your cell phone because it sends a signal from your cell phone to the antenna of the roach and you can tell it to move left or right. So I thought that was the coolest thing and I figured I would get a couple of these roaches um, so I can try it out. There's a, a couple of cool features about them that will allow this to happen without hurting them and you can look them up online and you can find out more about it if you want to see how it's done but the reality of it is i didn't have the heart to put him in water which is what you're supposed to do in cold water and they go into this hibernation stage so if you think about it with us if you go underwater the less you move around the less oxygen you use up and the longer you can stay underwater so with these guys they don't breathe oxygen like we do they don't have lungs but they're able to hold oxygen in their bodies for very long. And if you saw in the past, there's a Mythbusters episode where they see if roaches would outlive humans. And the answer was yes, because they put them underwater for a half hour, drowned the uh, common cockroaches that you see in homes, and they came back the next day and they were alive. And they've put them under heavy radiation and they've survived it and many other things. With all of that said, you can pretty much put them inside a cold glass of water they go into this hibernation stage and then you're able to perform the surgery on them which is really just uh, implanting the electrodes on there so basically you can create your own army of robot roaches and take over the planet and if you're wondering where you can find these guys they're generally in uh, South America and Central America so you'll see them in the rainforests um, well most of the time you won't see them because they have such good camouflage that you wouldn't even know that they were there most of the time. And they hide very well because of their flat bodies. So they can just push up against things. You'd never really know they were there unless they were moving. And these guys also move super slow. Um, so 
most predators won't even notice that they're around. Another cool thing about them is they're actually related to some of the first winged insects that were out like 200 million years ago. And these guys are related to them. So if they were able to survive that, I mean, imagine. These guys have been around longer than we have. They actually aren't as dirty as most people think. Um, they will actually take the dead and they'll move them into an area that's kind of like a garbage pile. And they'll also move old food or anything that might be starting to get moldy because it could affect the whole colony. So they can actually, they actually know to move it out of the way. And they have this weird thing where their immune system actually remembers things like ours do, where if there's a certain type of mold, um, it'll create different types of proteins to kill it. And their bodies remember that kind of stuff. Another thing too, is if you see these guys as juveniles, they actually don't look like this. They don't have wings yet and they'll molt and they'll grow um, pretty quick. Uh, they only live about 20 months, so it doesn't give them that much time to be around. This guy's pretty much already at the end of his life cycle, but he's still really cool. He's still doing pretty good, so I'm not worried about it. This is the only one I have of this species. I did have one other one, but she passed away, and I was gonna use her in a resin piece. And if you guys haven't checked out my resin pieces before, they're actually just, uh, a lot of times people would send me bugs that they find dead or they would be pets that have passed away and I'll keep them. And especially with bugs, they don't decay like a, a mammal or a reptile would. So you actually still have the bug looking exactly like it did when it was alive. And it's really cool when we put them in resin, that way it can encase it forever. And you can actually see all the different cool bugs that I've put up on and my resin pieces up over here in this link. Another thing about these guys is that they're omnivores. As most of you know, roaches will eat pretty much anything. And they'll eat decaying animals, which means if you die and you're decaying, they will come and eat you. And if there is decaying plant matter in your yard, they'll actually eat that too. So what I did was in the winter, when all the leaves fell off the trees, I created a huge pile of leaves and they're all decaying now. And underneath live a bunch of millipedes and earwigs and all sorts of bugs that eat decaying plant material. So I can go outside and actually just grab a pile for her and put it in her tank and she'll eat it. Most of the time I also put uh, food scraps in there. So I'll put in, you know, like little pieces of carrots or different vegetables and stuff in there for him. Uh, some of my other roaches I've had are um, the hisser roaches. I've had some other species of cave roaches and I also have a few of the common house roaches. I didn't expect to have those as pets, but I put them in a tank with my tarantulas because I thought that they would eat them and they didn't end up eating them. And I ended up seeing all the roaches just popping in and out from under the rocks every once in a while. So as you guys can see, I like talking about these guys and I can go on forever about it. I figured I would just end the video here, but before I go, I did want to mention one other thing. Uh, I'm planning on also building these guys a custom terrarium. Since they're arboreal, um, I have a nice corner wall that I can put it on and I want to build it so that it has some cool branches and everything else so that they can climb on. And I do have another tank right now that's got a couple mixes species of roaches and they get along fine. So I wanted to see if maybe I can put some partitions where they, uh, they can live together as well. That way I can have just one area where they all are instead of multiple tanks, which take up more room, obviously. So let me know what you guys think would work best for a corner tank for these guys. Um, I was thinking of either doing like a glass front or maybe some screen sides so that they have something to climb on. I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about it. I'm just kind of trying to rearrange some of, uh, some of these guys and where they're at. Maybe you guys can help me figure out the best way to display these guys. And lastly, I love hearing stories about the weird pets that you guys have owned. So feel free to leave comments below and tell me about the weirdest pets that you've owned. I'm sure I'm not the only one out there who cares about keeping weird pets like these as well. So let me know what you guys have. And if you have some cool stories and you want to share them in the comments below, I'd love to hear it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye, people. Thank you.